welcome back. And the countdown to our database keynote continues. And to do so, we are here with the Senior Vice President of Product Management, Jenny Seismith, as well as Vice President of Database Product Management. VP. Oh, VP. Oh, what did I say? You said it. I just wanted to say it again. Oh, yeah. geez. Look, <laughs> right. Look at him making me think I messed Put up. Put some respect on that VP. <laughs> VP. Kay, Malcolm, thank you both so much for being here. We are so excited to have you on. Now we just had Sir Rob on here, um, and he gave us kind of a little bit of insight into Database uh, 23AI, but can you guys tell us a little bit more, what is Oracle Database 23AI? All right, can I start? Start it, Paul. All right, so Oracle Database 23AI is our latest flagship database product from Oracle, and it is our next generation converged database. It's a long-term support release, which means many of our customers are waiting for this release, yeah. 19C was the prior one, and it has tons of features, hundreds of features, thousands of enhancements, and uh, we're really, really excited. We it's available, too. by the way, on it's the okay. cloud and on the engineered systems that Oracle has. Okay, because I mean, I've heard Larry and Juan and Andy now talk about how this might be one of the most important releases don't Ever. forget, Edward Screven also said in 40 years that he's been here, this is the most exciting. It's a game changer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. don't forget that. Okay, <laughs> I won't forget them. <laughs> what problems does 23AI address? So I want to focus on the three key themes. And there are three. So AI, developer, and mission critical. Let's start with mission critical because mission critical obviously is what we're known for. Um, Oracle is still the most highly performant, highly available database. And the whole idea here is we want to make sure that we're preventing against unforeseen days, um, downtime. AI, and then this love letter to developers, because <laughs> that's what I think the 23AI is, right Jenny? It is a love letter to developers. Um, there was historically, it was a bit of a challenge, Andy mentioned this in his keynote, doing development on Oracle Database. So with 23AI, we wanted to make it less complex, much easier to build cloud-native apps on the Oracle Database. Okay, two letters have been used more than any two letters in the conference. Anybody got a guess which ones? I think I and then A. A. No, 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 no. You, no. Got, you got it wrong. Intelligent no, agent, that's it. No, 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 try again. Come on. Come on, Fritz. AI. AI. Action item. A action item. A no, AI. not action item. <laughs> Artificial <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, so with AI, we want to bring AI to the data. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is we need to help enterprises build cloud native, I'm sorry, build AI apps on the Oracle database. And these applications are not just using AI. Uh, Jenny mentioned all of the innovations, the ability to do the queries with JSON or unstructured data, with graph data, find relations in the database, all of that is, is possible. I mean, it's a game changer. So Jenny, if we could pick three areas then to pay attention to when it comes to AI in this release, what would you suggest? All right, we'll start with something we call algorithmic AI, which okay. is basically machine learning. And we've had that in the database for 20 years, over. Right? over yeah, maybe two decades. Yeah. And the idea is that if you're training your data models, why not bring the machine learning algorithms into the database where the data already resides, right? So that's one. Um, AI vector search, definitely, and Kay mentioned it, right? AI vector search is a way for us to basically allow customers to do similarity search to augment their generative AI so that it produces more accurate information. And then the third piece is Select AI, which we introduced with Autonomous Database last year, and now we're going to make it available in Oracle Database 23 AI. And Select AI lets you talk to your database, so you don't have to write SQL code. Easy. Or Love writing it. SQL. You I don't know. have to worry, Fritz. We've yeah. got I, you. Hey, look, he I've already concerned. updated Easy. my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> Fantastic. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. <laughs> well, Kay, I mean, we've, we've talked about Vector just a, a little bit, maybe a lot. Um, already here and also um, in our previous segment. But can, can we talk about how organizations are actually leveraging that? So the key thing about AI, there's lots of talk about AI, but how do enterprises actually use AI and what are those use cases? So I want to highlight three industries. Um, so retail, Kendall, that outfit. <laughs> 
I'm just that, gonna, you I'm just guys sit back. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it is stunning. You shall so, sign us. Oh now, my being gosh. able to do product recommendations, and what I really want to do is take a picture of Kendall's jacket and say, yes. um, use AI vector search to find <laughs> similar items because AI is all around doing similarity and, search. And within our budget. Oh, <laughs> there you with, right? Well, that's, that's the and, relational piece. And, and in the city that we're in. Yes. Right? Wow. Yeah. Wow, Do you wow. see how that Game works? Game changing. Game yeah. changing. Yeah. Um, and I'm then. Lost. <laughs> that's okay. We'll, we'll get the right. We'll catch yeah. you up. We'll, yeah. You're doing pretty good with yeah. your pockets. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, in, in industrial, being able to do things like predictive maintenance. And then, I mean, you know, Oracle, we are a healthcare company. Right. So what if you could use AI vector search to do gene DNA similarity search across multiple genes and then find the similar genes? So um, what we're finding with these use cases is enterprises don't just want to leverage AI to do this; they also want to augment with their um, augment with their enterprise data. Yeah, so I actually want to dive into that mm -hmm. a little bit more. At, at Oracle, we really are focused on AI for the enterprise. We actually had Luke on earlier, and he talked yeah. about how that is one of our differentiators for Oracle. Can you expand, Jenny, on how AI vector search is more enterprise friendly than other um, than other vector database solutions? Well. The easy thing is it's built on top of the enterprise level security, scalability, availability platform called Oracle Database, We've right? Been hearing it all about it. It comes for free, <laughs> essentially, and it runs on Oracle Exadata, which yes. is our most optimized database machine, Oracle Database, right, right? Right. So all of that underpins you know, what you get for the vector search part. And then on top of that, as we've been talking about, you know, customers already have their operational data in Oracle Database. Now they can add the vector search and augment that kind of insight that they can get from the queries that they want to be able to perform. So, so Kay, kind of keeping on diving in, um, most people know Oracle for being the most performant and highly available mission critical database. Yes. What are two key innovations in that area for 23AI? So one of the biggest is true cache. Um, now I'm not a good namer of things. Um, actually, this is to compare it with other vendors that have faux cash. Oh, it was yes. not real cash. <laughs> right. Right. It's right. True cash. It is a true cash. Got it. And what this is, it is a um, it's a read-only replica of the primary database. So what we're doing, so the problem with these faux caches that Jenny was mentioning <laughs> is developers would be responsible for doing the integration and the management, right, of, of the data. And then they would have to sacrifice hmm, if I want to get, do a query uh -huh. for Kendall's jacket, but she, she the, the actual jacket is no longer available, the cache may not have been primed and may not know that that jacket is no longer available because Jenny and I already bought it. <laughs> um, so with a true cache, it is a true replica. The active data guard technology that we have underpins it. Um, another technology that you know we've sort of beefed up is Rack. So Rack is all about this whole idea of being able to horizontally scale your applications. With, with the 23AI Rack updates, you're able to do things like, like local rolling downtime maintenance. And so for one Rack node, and I know I'm getting, don't it's, worry. It's really Chris. very little downtime. Uh, very little downtime. Okay, let's, two, yeah. 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 So with one Rack node, you can have two instances of the Oracle database, patch one, and still have that node available. Wow. Which we've had for some time, but now it's helping the smaller customers who don't necessarily have the multi-cluster rack right. environment. Yeah. Right. Wow. Right. Can I add one more? Yeah, yeah. Okay. please do. One of my favorites Tell me. is the globally distributed database with graph replication. Okay, we have customers who have data all around the world, but they have to comply with data sovereignty rules where right. they say, the data for certain countries have to reside in that country. Right. And so we have a solution called Globally Distributed Database, which shards the data, so you have a virtual database. But now we add a RAF replication, which makes it really, really simple to ensure that you have an active, active kind of configuration. So you can make the change of that data from anywhere and ensure that there's sub-second, sub-three-second failover if there's any kind of problem. So that's... Jenny, is GDD new? <laughs> 
Well, it's not. okay, it used to be called <laughs> sharding. Yes. But sharding was too nerdy of a term, <laughs> so we call it globally distributed database, which everybody can there, you picture, right? Right. Yeah, Much exactly. shorter, exactly. right? Yeah. Much easier on the tongue. Yeah, that's so, so important. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. say fault tolerance, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> now, uh, Larry talked a lot about security. Oh, Anything yeah. new security-wise, Jenny? Oh, right. So, yeah. Oh, you want to? Uh, either of you. Okay, well, can I just? Sure. So he talked about a built-in um, security in terms of, you know, uh, Zipper, which right. is the zero trust uh, packet routing right. uh, in the network. But we also have something within the database called the in-database firewall, so that um, instead of having a firewall outside of the database where you can have some protection, but there's that network latency between the database and the machine that's running the firewall, we're taking the firewall and putting it alongside the database in the kernel, and so it's extra protection. And there's something called SQL injection attacks, yes. which is fairly prevalent, right? And so this just further protects your data from that kind of attack. Sorry. Oh, no, no, that was what I was going to oh, okay. say. <laughs> Great mind sync alike. Exactly. But you know, so she's the big boss. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. but she is taller than me. So. <laughs> well, we've, well, we've just had a SQL injection attack telling us that uh, we got to wrap this up. Yeah, uh, well, Juan's like keynote that, hey. is about to begin. We could keep talking forever, but we do have to hand it over to, uh, to Keynote Hall, where Juan's keynote is just about to begin. Stay tuned afterwards. We'll be right back here on Oracle TV to close out day one. Over to Keynote.